Well, welcome along to another episode of Super 7 in association with Speedway Social. We'll talk to a rider and ask him to give us his top seven riders he'd like to either race with or he's seen racing. My name's John McGilvery. Yeah, and I'm Liam Rudden, and as ever, we are going to be joined today by one of the one of the best known names, a, a real favourite uh, on the speedway scene here in the UK. Um, he's going to tell us his dream team, uh, the people that he would put out on the track if he was a team manager. And uh, I'll let John do the introductions as always. John. Yes, a well-known face, certainly north of the border up here. I'd like to welcome along to our Super Seven, Mitchell Davy. Mitchell, thanks for joining us. No worries. Thanks for having me along. Uh, how's life uh, for you just now? Obviously, tough times for everyone. The 2020 season um, can it didn't really happen. Um, how have you found the year? Um, yeah, to tell you the truth, it's, it's all a bit different. Um, yeah, obviously, I, I spent last year full time with Craig Cook, so you know, speed, speedway life was super busy. Um, I managed to get a job over the winter, um, and yeah, obviously, when the, the whole lockdown started, I was put on put on furlough and. And I think I've been back working now for a couple of months, but you know, I think things are, are different. You know, it's still got to be very, very cautious out there, and yeah, sort of taking it as it comes. But yeah, the, obviously, the news over the past couple of days is, yeah, made it all uh, real that it's bad again. So we'll uh, we just keep plodding along, going day to day. Yeah, so it's important that you're staying safe, ultimately, and your family um, are safe as well. But. Um, we're hoping, certainly everyone has their fingers crossed, that 2021 um, happens. Um, the teams up and down the land have put measures in place in the stadiums and all that sort of stuff so we can get racing again in 2021. And um, What are your plans for 2021? Uh, to tell you the truth, absolutely no idea at the moment. That's <laughs> what, uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, that's what, um, you know, uh, I guess I haven't, I haven't raced for, for two years, so... Um, you know, I don't know whether I'll go back to full time racing or not. You know, it's a it's a long time out. Um, but at the same token, you know, I enjoyed being a part of Craig Cook's camp last year. Um, so yeah, I really don't know what the future holds for me. Um, but yeah, that's what the, the main thing is. Obviously, making sure everyone's safe and hopefully that racing can get get going again. Mitchell, do you do you miss the racing? Would you uh, when you were sort of engine mechanicing for uh, Craig? Were there moments when you wished it was you getting on the bike and going out there? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. That's what, um, I, I tell you one thing, riding the bike is a lot less stressful than being a mechanic. That's <laughs> 100%. But I feel for all the mechanics that, you know, have done it for years on end because oh, when you push that rider off and you got a million, you got this massive checklist in your head going off and you're just trying to make sure everything's done, you know, because the rider's safety is in your hands. So it's it's huge. <laughs> uh, so let's have a look then at your um, Super 7 Mitchell. Uh, we had a read through it obviously before we've, we've came live. Um, to say it's heavy Australian based is, a, is an understatement. But listen, it's, it goes without saying you're an Australian lad, we'd expect nothing less. So um, we'll start at number one. Um, a man who's a three time uh, world champion and a world under 21 champion. Who have you gone for at number one? Uh, it was Jason Crump. That's what, um, you know, he, he, he is, when he was, you know, winning his world titles and everything that, you know, he was from, formidable no matter whether it was league racing, GP racing, you know, what is it? And, you know, you got to have a spearhead like that at the top, don't you? That's, you need that uh, strong number one. He's obviously back racing now um, as well. Is there any chance of a free transfer from Craig Cook's pit team to his? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm staying north of the border. I don't I don't want to move down <laughs> south. You know these boys, are, oh, crumpy. You know, obviously signed signed for Ipswich. That's that's a long old drive from Glasgow. So no, nah, no no swapping camps. Was he an inspiration for you, uh, Mitchell? Yeah, that's uh, he, you know at the time sort of I was getting into junior speedway. Um, you know that was when he was going through like you know him being at the top, and you know seeing you know, someone, you know, from Australia, you know, go to that level and be so dominant and that that's what you, you know, I think everyone sort of the same era as me, that's what they aspired to was being Jason Crump. You know, Lee, Lee Adams was obviously there as well and, and Ryan Sullivan, but, you know, Crumpy was, he was the one who won the world titles. So, and obviously he's Queensland based as well. So that helps. 
And have you met him, uh, Mitchell? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've known Jason since uh, I, I think maybe when I was five, six years old. Um, I've got a lot of his early merchandise. I still got it um, in Australia. He would always sign stuff when he got stuff made and send it send it out to to my family in Aussie. So, you know, we've known known Jason for for years and. Even like I used to get Phil to do my engines when I first started over here as well. So, yeah, it was a good, good sort of, yeah. I, I guess like a, my first couple of years as well, I could you know text or call Jason and he'd he'd offer advice where where he could. How important is that to have someone at that level um, that you can contact, you can touch base, say, listen, Jason, you know, I'm having a problem with X, Y, or Z, or this is not right or that's not right. A guy who certainly at that time was absolutely at the top of his game. How important is it to have someone like that? Oh, it's it's massive. And I think, you know, as we go through my list, each and every one of the, I think the riders in, in, the, in my team has done that in some way, you know, have, have been like a someone I could go to and ask questions and, you know, bounce, bounce ideas off. Um, obviously, like, Crumpy was like, you know, at at his peak, he was like really busy and all that. So like, he didn't have as much time as, say, some some of the other riders who have helped me along the years. Um, but you know, I there was I it was either my first or second year when I was setting up. Um, just asked him, you know, where's the best place to you know to get parts from for your bikes and everything like that. Um, you know, and he pointed me in the right direction. Um, yeah, and even even in Australia one year. Um, I got my coaching license and he was on the same coaching course. So we spent, a, I think, a weekend together learning how to be a, a, a sports speedway coach. So, uh, yeah, spent spent some more time with him doing that. So I had a lot of insight, you know, sort of away from the speedway then as well. We're going to stay in Australia for your uh, number two rider in your team. Um, yeah. Tell us who this is. Uh, it's Davey Watt. Um, again, another... Queen, Queenslander, but um, very, very influential to me from, you know, when I was 16 to, I think, probably around eight, 18, you know, every time Dave, Dave came back to Australia, he'd race like the Queensland titles and things like that. So he was always at the local tracks. Um, you know, he was, he was sending me parts when, when I wasn't in the UK. He was sending me parts uh, to Australia. I, was, I think I was one of the first people in Australia to have the straight back end. Because Dave Dave sent it out to us to try, um, but yeah, just just sending clutch plates, teaching me like how to set clutches up and do, doing loads of things, you know. So it was it was a great help, and you know, on on his day, he was a formidable rider as well. A, a, a great team member, by the looks of it, as well. He was a three times uh, elite league champion, um, Davey Watt. You know, did you, you didn't ride with Davey, but you must have been in in pit series and things with him. Um, yeah, you know, how big an influence was he? Yeah, the massive. I, I, he came. It was in a Queensland title. I think I'd only just moved to the 500 cc bikes, and he came over during the meeting and pulled my clutch out and showed me how to do the clutch, like prepare the clutch in the middle of the meeting, because he seen I was having trouble. And you know, for him to be in the middle of such, you know, Queensland titles, it's it's big, but it's not it's not massive. But at the same time, for him to take the time out and come over and give me a few pointers and you know, sort of put me in the right path. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's what his, his like family we've always known as well. Um, so being, you know, have, he was someone who before I even thought about coming to the UK, I could ask him questions and he would tell me what it's like, what to expect. Um, and, you know, how to, I guess, best, best prepare myself. We'll move on to um, rider number three then. Um, this is a guy that uh, I think if anyone's ever paid admission money to watch this guy, they'll have absolutely got their money's worth. Um, he's a four-time South Australian champion, a two-times uh, Premier League Pairs champion. Uh, who have you got at number three? Uh, that's Mr. Mr. Shane Parker, I believe I put down at number three. <laughs> <clears throat> the one and only. Um, yeah. You know, when you're building a one to seven, you need that entertainer. And boy, he can do it. The things that you know, I raced alongside him at Glasgow for my first couple of years. The things you've seen him do on track and that, and you're like, I want to be like him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah, Shane, Shane was a great guy on on and off the track. And, 
again, someone you could ask a million questions to and he, he would offer every bit of advice that he could. Um, you know, you, I know, I know countless of Aussie, like names of Aussie riders that Shane has, you know, pointed in the right direction, helped out. Um, but yeah, when you, when you're building a one to seven, you need someone like Shane Parker in it. So Shane was very much the, um, the showman as well when he was on track and when he was off track. Um, what did you learn from him from that side of things and, and how important is it to have that character in the team? Yeah, it's massive because, you know, you, like from, from my instance, coming across me first couple of years, you know, not everything always goes your own way. You know, you have bad days, you have good days. And, you know, his persona off the, on and off the track, you know, he'll pick you up when you're down. And at the same time, keep keep your level headed. Don't let you get too far ahead of yourself just because you had one good day. And yeah, you know, for him to entertain the crowds with you know the the antics that he that he got up to, it just it sort of took the focus off you know the over pressure um, of tr- trying to be the best. You know, you just you got to have fun with it at the same time. Otherwise, yeah, there's no point doing it at all. Um, when you said you wanted to be like Shane, did that include riding a speedway bike naked at one point? Nah, definitely not. No, it's way too no, cold over here for that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be cut of a certain cloth to want to go and do that. <laughs> yeah, he, it, that would always blow my mind because Shane was one rider who were, wore thermals all year long over here. <laughs> but yet someone said, on you go. Hey, hey, there he was, stripping down. Oh, and off he went. <laughs> At number four, you've got another um, great character um, from the Speedway world, uh, still racing. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Craig Cook. Um, yeah, you know, I spent a lot of time with Craig, you know. Um, I remember we, we were pitted again, uh, we, we were faced off against each other, I think, in 2010. He was at reserve for Workington and I was at reserve for Glasgow. Um and we still laugh about it to this day. We we bring out the old results and find out who beat who. I even I showed him last year. I found a video of uh, me going past him at Glasgow. So I was like, just remember that. And, you know, when I tell you what to do, mate, when I'm working for you. <laughs> so no, we we have yeah. He's 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 one of my so, you know really good friends in in the sport. Um, you know, we're always always on the phone to each other, discussing things, trying to. Trying, trying to get him, you know, back to where he wants to be in the sport. Um, but the things I've seen Craig do on the bike is phenomenal. Um, you know, just, just, yeah, he, he's very, very smart on the bike um, and knows what he wants to do. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, if, if it ever clicked, you know, he got sort of everything that he wanted. He, he'd be very, very good. Not that he already is, it, but... <laughs> How important is that friendship when you're working with him in the pits? Do you, I assume you have to be on the same page and how much easier does it is it to be on the same page when you actually have that friendship there as well? Yeah, it, well, I guess it, sometimes it makes it hard at the same time because obviously, you know, things sometimes get heated, but most of it, I, you know, it must have been like only once or twice. Um, but most of the time we, ha- we have a great understanding. Um, obviously it, it's well documented. Craig struggles a little bit with mental health, but for some reason, he, I don't, I don't know. Um, but I, I feel he can talk to me a lot of the time and he doesn't feel like he's being judged or anything like that. And I think it was massive for him and that's why he wanted me to work like help him um, and just having another rider to bounce ideas off. It's, I think, I think it helps a lot. Um, I, I learned that the first time I was a mechanic working for, for Klaus Vissing, bouncing ideas like back and forward between two riders, you, you know, you can generally, you add one and one, you, you will get two. You'll find that, you know, sort of the thing that you're looking for. Um, because the riders, you know, they'll always say searching for that little bit extra. Um, so yeah, I don't know. W- working with Craig, it was um, it, it was really good, really good fun. Um, obviously, it opened up uh, a, a world of opportunity. You know, being p- 
part of like, I, I think I, I first couple of meetings I did with him, he took me to a couple of Grand Prix um, at the back end of 2018. Um, seeing the inside of that, doing the Speedway and Nations with him, um, you know, the, the GP challenge and things like that. It's, it's, a, it's a different world. Um, but at the same time, we kept it fun and tried, tried to, you know, help him get the best results possible. We mentioned it before we came on the air, but um, how does it feel, uh, you know, being in the pits but not being on the bike? Um, it's it's awkward because <laughs> um, you, you see things from when you stand on the outside of the track, you see things and you're like, oh, maybe you should do that. But then you know as a rider at the same time, that's not how it plays out because you got split seconds to make decisions on the track. Um so, so sometimes you, you know, you'll watch and you'll be like, oh, maybe you should have tried that. And then be, having ridden the bike, you can play back in your head or maybe it doesn't actually appear like that when you're out there. Um, but Craig, Craig and Klaus both were really good. You know, if I offered suggestions, they would try it. And if it worked, it worked. Um, if it didn't, we'd come back and go back to the drawing board. Um, so in a way, like the problem solving was fun. Um, but yeah, obviously riding the bike's always the fun bit. It leads me to a couple of questions. Obviously one, I uh, I actually once helped Ryan Fisher at Kings Lynn in the pits. So see when you said earlier on that it's stressful. Now I know as much about Speedway Bike as a Speedway Bike knows about me. So he's trying to help <laughs> Ryan Fisher. Oh, what a laugh that wasn't. Um, but I, I know how stressful it can be. And I also, I don't know Craig. I don't, certainly don't know him in any way that you do. Um, but having been behind the scenes and seen Craig on a race day, very determined, very single-minded in his in his focus, which is great and has clearly got him to being as very good a speedway rider as he is. How difficult is that then to deal with when he comes in? Maybe it hasn't gone his way and he's looking for answers. And unfortunately, he's looking for you for answers. <laughs> yeah, um... It, you sometimes you, you get that feeling like you're like oh wow that, that that really didn't work but that was one thing that you know all the riders I've worked with they've never come in and said that was your fault and mm -hmm. you know you're really sort of thankful for that um you know because at the same time yeah you both sort of you always check with the rider if they want to you know try something different with the mm -hmm. bike and they you know, know it's a ultimately game, but... it's their decision anyway, aren't they? Because they, they ride the bike, they know the bike, and they would probably know, look, Mitchell, what you're saying probably actually is quite a good idea. Or, no, I see Mitchell, I'm riding this thing, that won't help. Yeah, no, that's what... And you, you always get that fear, you know, if something doesn't go to plan, that they're going to come in and bite your head off for it. But that is one thing, it, it never happened. It was always like a... Oh, well, that didn't work. Obviously, maybe with a few expletives in there. But, <laughs> <laughs> Keep it clean, um, mate. It's a family show. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's it. I'll try my best. Um, the other thing, sorry, Mitch, the other thing I was going to ask was how easier then for the likes of Craig is it if he has a former rider or, sort of, or you know, current former rider there who's ridden the bike, who knows how to ride a speedway bike in his corner rather than, you know, I, I, I'm not the greatest example, but someone like me, just fuel that, do this, you know, who can lend a hand and who who knows how to ride the speedway bike? Does that certainly benefit up for him, or is it not really that kind of thing? I think I think it's it's huge. It, yeah. it is massive. You get you obviously you know you'll get mechanics who have been involved in the sport for years and they learn, you know, and they sort of learn with different riders what what things work and what don't. But I, I know like being on the bike, you know, that sort of the sensation changing that should give you, and you know, vice versa. Um, mm. So, you know, I always, I try to explain to whoever I'm working with, um, this is what, I, this is what I, this, to me, what the, the bike appears to be doing. So this is what I would change. Mm -hmm. How does it feel for you? And what, what would you like to change? And you sort of find a middle road somewhere that could be the right answer, could be the wrong answer. Mm. So we'll go to rider number five then. Um, a two times under 21 uh, world champion, um, a three time Australian under 21 champion, a Premier League winner. Um, who, who is it you have at number five? It's Darcy Ward. 
And I don't think you could build a team without Darcy. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. Every time you see a uh, a video pop up on on you know Facebook, YouTube, and it's a, a great speedway race, nine times out of ten, Darcy's in it. So, <laughs> so he certainly, he yeah. certainly was a talent. You know, when you look at how well he did at under twenty one level, um, it was such a shame what happened to him and, and cut what we should and could have been an incredible career. Sure. Ah. Uh, yeah, it's very obviously you know it sh- it shook the speedway world. Um, what happened to him? You know, it, it was an unfortunate accident. Um, but like you say, you know what what could have been probably would have been scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, it would have been a very glittered career. Now he was he was only twenty three when he had his accident, I believe. Um, you're no stranger to accidents yourself, Mitchell. Uh, what makes you come back from them? What makes you want to get back on the bike? Um, a, a lot of it is not finishing on a crash. No one wants to finish a career on a crash. Um, but I think a lot of it also comes down to the the fault of the crash. Um, you know, when I badly broke my femur, um, you know, I was out for 23 months. I had a lot of surgery to fix it. Um, you know, couldn't walk right for ages and everything like that. But I knew at the time that was my my mistake. So, you know, I was happy with that. You know, uh, I could overcome that. I knew what I did wrong. And, yeah, that's why I couldn't couldn't blame anyone else. Um, 2018 was, it was a bit harder to take, obviously. It was, a, in a way, a pathetic crash. But just the way that sort of things followed, made a little di- different um it it made it a bit harder to get over um and also i i can deal with breaking bones but when it's when it starts hurting the internal organs you uh you need them after speedway the bones the bones heal the uh the organs you're gonna need so that that was that, that's probably the main difference with, with my crashes um you know touch, touch wood i've never you know had injuries like on the level that darcy obviously had to endure um, but that's, that's sort of the mentality I think that comes with like riders getting injured is like the blame and also, you know, your, your perspective on life of whether, you know, how much tolerance your body can take. Mm-hmm. I do remember yeah, when you crashed and broke your femur, Mitchell, and, and then when I heard that you were getting back on a bike, you know, I had an idea of how serious an injury it was at the time and, and how long it was going to take you to recover. When I heard that you were getting back on a bike, yeah, I couldn't believe it. You know, I thought like, the guy's been through hell and back. Um, so absolutely fair play. And it always astounds me when, when Liam and I talk to riders, former riders, whoever, and they tell us about the crash and, and them moving back into the sport. You know, you think, oh, you've just been through that to go and jump on the bike. But I think the word that keeps coming up for us, Liam, is the buzz. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that is 100%. It. That's so one thing that keeps going, going on your back. There's no no feeling like it. Once, you, once you've got the taste for it, that's that's it. Now, at number six, there's a man who I imagine probably instilled the very first ideas of that buzz into you. Yeah, um, I had to, had to put my dad in the team. Um, <laughs> he he was the reason why I got into racing. Um, you know, he gave me the the opportunities that I have, and you know, he took me out of school when I was what was I six. 17 I think when I first came over yeah 17 I would have been brought me over for a two-week holiday which led led me to getting a a contract with Glasgow and then took six months out of work to come and help me for the first six months of my uh, racing career so massive pivotal part in in obviously my my life and my life in Speedway Um, but yeah he was a a very good rider local rider in, in Australia himself so uh, so she, yeah. Your dad was Gary Davy, yes, um, and he he never rode in the UK, but he he almost did. Yeah, that's what I, I've you know when I was young and you know obviously he was giving me the opportunities to come over. I always asked why didn't you, and he said he had planned to, um, and then something come up that he, he obviously didn't manage to to come over, um, and yeah, he just sort of never chased it after that. I think. Um, that was when he sort of settled down with, with my mum and, uh, yeah, started having a family and everything like that. And then uh, we started costing him too much money. 
<laughs> and he's a referee now as well, but we'll forgive him for that. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I, Boo. I, I give him hell every time he makes a bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at number seven as well, uh, Liam, I don't know if you've heard of this guy. Um, is, is it number sounds seven? familiar, John. Uh, who have you familiar. got at number seven? Oh, I got got to have myself in the team, you know. You, just, <laughs> you can't build a lineup like that, and you know, not not uh, not right not off the yard. Of your butt. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I, I don't think you know a lot of people would beat that team. So uh, why not ride the glory with them? <laughs> Let them do the hard work. <laughs> we normally ask as well, Mitch, um, about a team manager. Uh, we might have just sprung this on you a wee bit here, but is there any managers that you've had um, that have been an inspiration to you, or the or Alternatively, you could keep that one to seven in control and under and in check. Um, Ross Roscoe's been good. He was he was he was quite good with me um, at Swindon. You know, obviously I made the made the jump. You know, to to the to the Premiership um, in 2018, and he took me aside at first and said, "No pressure. Do do what you can." And then I think the two opening meetings, I had really good meetings and. He applied a bit of pressure from there, um, but um, no, he was he was really good. He knows how to handle the you know the world class right. And again, he's someone who's ridden the bike, so it's it's massive having someone like that. You know, they understand the emotions of it and things that you're going through. Who would be your team captain? Ooh. probably Davy Watt. Dave, Davey Watt or Shane, you know, very level-headed. I, I can't remember whether Shane was good at winning the uh, the toss or not, to tell you the truth. So <laughs> that might cost him. <laughs> cost him the captaincy. Um, but, yeah, you know, both level-headed. Um, obviously, I think the likes of, you know, your Jason, your Craig, your Darcy, you just let them race and get on with it, let them focus on their job at hand. But I think, yeah, with with Dave and Shane, they 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 know the sport. They know what it, what it's about, and yeah, they would uh, be able to you know help everyone in the right direction. And as you put yourself in the team there at number seven, if you were going out in a in a big win race, um, who would be the team rider you would want to ride with you? Who's the who's the best team rider out there? Um. I'd probably say Shane, um, uh-huh. Shane, Shane for sure. Um, I remember actually a real life occasion. We were racing at Birmingham in 2009, maybe 2008, 2009. And I got taken off in the first corner accident. And then obviously straight back in the rerun. And I was sitting at the start line and I realized my seat bracket had snapped. So I made a start in the rerun and was stuck on the outside line and Shane protected me. And he, he, we pulled up on the, like on the back straight after the race. He's like, what's going on? You're all over the shot. So I got no seat, mate. <laughs> and, but for him to be able to, we were against I think the Birmingham number one that night in that heat as well. So, you know, for him to protect me like that, you know, obviously struggling without, without having the use of a seat was yeah. Incredible. Um, he did give me absolute hell afterwards for it, but because I was slow. You've got, you, so you've, you've got to admire his honesty. Uh, you were all over the yeah. place when was going on. Um, yeah. It's uh, Heat 15. It's a big one. You need a 5-1. Which two are you putting in out of that team? Oh, how have they scored on the night? That's... <laughs> <laughs> um, Cop out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I would. I would probably... I'd rest Crumpy because his wages would be through the roof. I'd probably run. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a there's a there's more start on, on John. On oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> looking after me, club here. Uh, <laughs> I'd I'd probably put put Darcy and Darcy and Craig out. Yeah. I think that would be good combination. You know, Darcy's going to miss the start, so everyone's going to be happy with the race. Craig's a good gator; he'll get the business done. You know, if it was a pivotal pivotal race and yeah, whatever happens with Darcy, I think people will be entertained. Well, we saw that first hand, Liam, didn't we, in 2014, Craig Cook making the gate uh, against Somerset, allowing Sam to come through uh, to win as the league. So I think that would probably be a good choice um, yep. for you as well. 
That's yeah, yeah. that's what the they good riders and boys. Now we're going into the final heat here, and um, with ten quick fire questions for you, uh, Mitch. <laughs> Number one, when was the last time you were on a speedway bike? I had a practice earlier this year. Um, during just as just as sort of lockdown was getting easy, I think it was June, June or July. Went down the red car for practice, so really enjoyed it. Do you have a lucky or favourite helmet colour? Uh, probably always blue, just because it matched like sort of my race colours. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite gate number? Um, two is, is I always like two um, but people would often say I do my best work off one or four uh, uh, Tea or coffee? Coffee for sure <laughs> And if you weren't a speedway rider what would you have been if you hadn't become a speedway rider what, what occupation mm. would have appealed to you? That's scary um, I got I got a degree in business and I got a degree in IT so I guess it'd be something along those lines well, that's where the money is just now yeah, yeah. <laughs> favourite pastime or hobby um, I like just going out and ride, riding a you know push bike mountain bike um, say say probably that or, or playing playstation I enjoy that too uh, favourite film Ooh, tough one if you ask me missus she'd say Crocodile Dundee uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, between, maybe, maybe cool running I don't know I, I watch a lot of stuff remember the Titans there's a lot that I watch a lot <laughs> I watched that last week for the first time very good film massive very good awesome. film uh, race suit or race jacket uh, I, I always used to like the race jacket um, but obviously the last year I was racing professionally I had two race suits and that was awesome because you didn't have to, if you're doing back-to-back -back days, you didn't have to worry about it being maybe a bit damp in places. Uh, the worst thing about Speedway? Injuries. In injuries for sure. Injuries and the, and the, the money you got to spend. It's massive. And the best thing about Speedway? It's, it's a feeling. Uh, four laps flat out. No, no breaks and hopefully winning at the end of it and yeah, that that is the you know the ultimate glory. Mitchell, I'm going to throw this one at you because I've just thought of it, and uh, we've not done this by any, anyone before, so uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll throw a, a new question at you. Um, so, if you had to give your team a name, what would they be? Mitchell's thoughts. <sighs> wow. I'll, I'll just I'll just be cocky and go go Mitchell's Untouchables. <laughs> 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 it doesn't strike me as a large shot of confidence, Liam, does he? Yeah. No, exactly. Best, no. best team manager out there. <laughs> Sack Roscoe off, I'm coming in. <laughs> well, Mitchell, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure doing this with you. Um, I've really enjoyed the, the last uh, half hour or so. It's been a, a great open and honest conversation. Um, so thanks for joining us. Thanks very much for having us. And uh, yeah, letting us take part in it. Thanks for your time, Mitchell. Yes, thank you. Well, we'll be back uh, soon with another episode of Super 7 where we'll be finding if someone can put a Super 7 together that would beat uh, Mitchell's Untouchables. Uh, until then, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>